What is the worst book that you read for school? Read Ethan Froome in high school. I have no idea why I hated it, but I made it a point to get rid of that book as soon as we were done with it. Easily the most boring premise for a book you could ever come up with. Who can get excited to read about a brooding cripple who sucks at sledding? Having to read Don Quixote in the original Spanish and then again in the modern to see if we understood the original. I swear that teacher was a sadist. Most of the books I hated weren't because of the book but because of how the teacher and my classmates approached the book. For example, Lord of the Flies. We talked a lot about Freud and leadership. My teacher liked attributing different characters to the id and the ego and claimed the author purposely did that. But there's a statement from the author that explicitly said the opposite. And for leadership she asked if it's possible to be a good leader but a bad person. I said yes and apparently that was wrong. That was the point of the book. The two factions had different leadership styles. The one was based off civilized democracy with the conch shell and voting but was ineffective in the situation. The other was effectively a dictatorship and eventually wins because even though the kid was a total jerk, he was an effective total jerk. 7 Habits of Highly Effective Teens F that book right in the A. I decided to try some of these. They are freaking horrible advice. Literally just made my depression worse most of the time. The boy in the striped pajamas. I understand the message the author was trying to put across, but it's the most unrealistic portrayal of death camps. No German kid would have ever gotten near a prisoner. No German kids would be unaware who Hitler was. It totally ignored the historic record. I had to read Twilight in my 10th grade honors English class because my teacher had Stephanie Meyer in his class when she was in school, and he was so excited that she had become such a success. We took chapter quizzes about a brooding, sparkly vampire when we should have been reading 1984 instead. That's ridiculous, but it's also so sweet that her former teacher is so proud of her. I wish I could read the quiz answers, which I'm guessing involved mushroom ravioli, rescue by Volvo. Frazier scented blood, Jacob's werewolf transformation as a metaphor for puberty, and vampire baseball. I had a teacher who managed to make Huckle brief and boring. Also the hatchet. That teacher was gifted with being terrible. Hatchet was a fantastic read and one of my favorite books growing up, so hearing that is petty sad. Ethan Froome, who tries to commit suicide by sledding into a tree. Awful characters in an awful book who could have solved all their problems by moving to Tahiti. I hated Jean Eyre. Absolutely hated it. Jane was boring. Rochester was an butthole. The prose was coma inducingly boring. I decided to reread it as an adult because I went through a classics kick. And to my shock and utter dismay, I loved it. I found Jean so much more relatable. I found Rochester, somewhat, less creepy. I could understand their motivations and sympathize with their challenges. And that's the day I realized that force feeding high schoolers books that they cannot relate to is the best way to poison the experience of reading and ensure that they'll never read another book after they graduate. To clarify, not saying it's not important to teach kids to read. I'm saying that there are ways to teach literacy and critical reading skills without assigning the Divine Comedy and Moby Dong to high schoolers. Romeo and Juliet in high school, an absolute bore. Romeo and Juliet in a college Shakespeare class, one of the funniest dang plays I've ever read. 13 reasons why I was terrible and I still refuse to watch the show because of it. While having the greatest chapters in history my mother is a fish, as I lay dying was a nightmare for a ninth grader to try and interpret. Yes, I loved Faulkner later, but I was reading that in ninth grade, got to my mother is a fish and couldn't stop laughing long enough to finish the assigned reading. Reading Great Expectations was like pulling teeth. I really, really hated The Awakening in high school. I kinda want to read it again to see if it was actually bad or just my attitude at the time, but man it was basically impossible to let any kind of productive discussion on that book because our whole class hated it. The Scarlet Letter. Oh yeah. The big A in the sky. Oh 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 a symbolism. God I hated that book. The Pearl by Steinbeck. The lesson. At least as we were taught. 
was that this guy was overtaken by greed and it causes him to basically lose everything. I read it as this poor guy who works an incredibly dangerous job, pearl diver, finds a pretty epic pearl and isn't keen to get fricked over by the intermediaries who are trying to get it at a discount. This guy knows that this was a once in a lifetime find and wants to get enough money to be able to effectively take care of his family and stop engaging in an occupation that is sure to shorten his life. Now, as an adult, I think I can understand the point a bit better. Still, it reads an awful lot like listen, take what you can get, don't worry about being taken advantage of especially when you have two people with such a power disparity as a pearl diver and the people buying said pearls. I read it on my own and got the message that the poor are often unjustly fricked in the butt by the rich and change is needed. Especially convincing when you realize Steinbeck was a struggling Great Depression era writer. His works frequently explore the themes of fate and injustice, especially as applied to downtrodden or everyman protagonists. Wikipedia. Hard times. The sentences were so long I forgot what the beginning was about by the time I got the end. This is so Dickens. Moby Dong is a regular part of AP English but holy crap I could not get into it at all. If you read Moby Dong as the mad ramblings of someone tortured by Saul Dare and the unrelenting pursuit of revenge, it's actually still pretty bad. It's not the worst, but it's definitely pretty rough to throw on young readers. Pretty sure the point of this thread is for people to tell us they hate these classic novels and then for others of us to jump in and vigorously defend said novels. I'm game tie between Wuthering Heights and Letters to Alice. Maybe I'd appreciate Wuthering Heights more if I read it again today, but Faye Weldon's condescending butt tone in Letters to Alice was unbearable. Island of the Blue Dolphins. Not the worst in quality, but it was just too dang sad. I was in 6th grade and it starts with her getting left on an island by her family. Her brother dies. The vol she raised died. She finally was rescued just to be told her whole tribe died on the boat ride she missed. I love me some sad literature, but 11 year old me was not pleased. This was one of my favorite books as a child. I think I read it in the 5th grade. You made some good points though. That book was dark. To this day I will always hate the pearl. The best part of the pearl was the copy I had. It was a used copy and had notations throughout about how much the person hated the book. At the start of the last chapter they wrote thank god it's almost over and guess what the baby dies. Moby Dong. Herman Melville's novel is masterfully written, but all that discourse on whale blubber and whale anatomy was off-putting at the time. My teacher actually told us to skip the whaling chapters. Scarlet Letter by far. Extremely slow pacing. Loads of unnecessary imagery and for a group of high schoolers it just pushed us all to use sparknotes for it and every other book we had. If I hear about the goddamn door or rosebush one more time. Worst use of imagery ever. The Pearl. I hated that book so much. Every page was just a drag to read. Everyone cheered when the baby got sniped Lomeo. The Turn of the Screw. Let me sum it up for you. Words 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 kids. Words words lady words words. Words ghost words words. Lady words kids words words. Words kids words words crazy lady. Words 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 words. Words ghost words words ghost. Wuthering Heights. Freaking killed me at 14. By the middle of the story I wanted every character to die. Exclamation point then they did lol. I'd say the road. Not because I hated it. It was just super freaking depressing. Economics III. It was pretty boring. Guess you haven't read applied applications of advanced calculus in differential equations. Spoiler alert. There's no examples of applied uses. Just straight mathematical theorems. I hated a separate piece. And I loved most everything I had to read for school. Well, except Dickens. The Alchemist is 200 pages from the kid who showed up for the lit class on symbolism and nothing else. I can't believe nobody liked this book. I mean, when the crazy scientist fused his daughter with a dog, that got me right in the feels. <laughs> Hamlet. Let me explain because I actually love the story after reading it at my own pace. My honors sophomore English class teacher should not have been allowed to teach this class. 
he constantly ran behind schedule and would punish us for it. At the end of the year I think we were supposed to read finish and discuss Hamlet in about a month or two and write a paper about it. What actually happened was we had two weeks before the year ended so he just read us the Sparknotes version of the story and made us act out scenes in lieu of writing a paper or having discussions about it. He was promptly made the gym teacher next year. Johnny Tremaine in 5th grade. That book made me seriously hate reading because it was so slow and boring. Frankenstein. Not so much that the story itself was bad but I had a really nasty teacher who made me the target of her anger every class. All this because I corrected a spelling error she made on the board beginning of the school year. It was the hardest school year ever, with her picking on me over every small thing, even going as far to pick on my appearance in front of the whole class. So every time I come across Frankenstein, it reminds me of that witch and I just can't bring myself to read it again, even when I went on to major in English literature. That's a shame. I really liked Frankenstein. Things fall apart. I understood the message. I appreciated the descriptions. I empathized with the characters as well as intended. But good lord was it hard to get through. A conquo. Ethan freaking Froome. This goddamn book has no purpose. It is the koala of literature. The characters are deeply unlikable, barely human. It's as if someone turned Ear from Winnie the Pooh into a narrator and had him write a book about his sad, dreary, snow-filled life of misery. The point is literally that everything sucks and then you die. Not only do you die, you die in the absolutely most dumb fuck way imaginable. You ride your freaking sled down a hill into a tree. Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. Broke my heart that freaking book. You have been visited by the snake of great corn. You will be blessed with corn for eternities to come. But only if you comment corn me up. Snake if you are new to the channel. You can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.